All right, welcome to the November 15th, 23 uh, Sisa University group call. This call is going to be very fast paced. I don't even know if I'm going to share this group call on YouTube. What I'll most likely do, at least to start, is I'll post it privately and then I'll share the private link with you guys. Um, it doesn't really stop you if you share it with somebody else, but just that way it's uh, somewhat restricted if I can uh, keep it that way. So what we're going to cover on this call, number one, if you see this, this is a similar format as to what I use in the courses, uh, except for you can, you can tell that there's very little uh, meat. You can basically see the bones, but no meat. So we're basically going to cover the meat, see what questions you guys have, and that'll help me develop the training a little bit to see what you want. Now on the group call, what we're going to cover, okay. So we're going to focus on number one. This will take about five minutes. The psychology behind the process of steps two, three, four, and five specifically. That'll be very quick. So that way we understand why we're creating the funnel this way. The reason I'm going to tell you that first is because I don't want you to say, well, why can't we create the funnel a different way? If you have that question, I'm still going to answer it. I just want to make sure that I kind of proactively attack that for the people who are not able to ask the question. Next, we're going to cover the fastest funnel ever. So this is essentially the, the most lean, low drag, ugliest funnel ever that will help you convert. You can build uh, either one of these within about well, the, the, the original version which is just a form you can build within easily three minutes. The one where you can add a video sales letter, it gets a little bit longer, but I'm going to show you how to build an extremely fast funnel for organic content. Then I'm going to show you how to build the VSL funnel, which is the one that most everybody wants to use. So in the VSL funnel, I'm going to share with you the low drag wireframe that professionals use. I will show you the professionals using it and I will show you exactly how to build it. I will pull up my go high level and I have a test sub account and I will build it with you live. So I will show you very quickly how to build it. Uh, number two, I'm going to show you how to use colors to convert. So this is colorblind proof. So if you are absolutely terrible with branding, if you're terrible with style, if, you're, if, if you need you know, your mom to dress you in the morning because you don't know what colors to go with what or your wife to dress you, this will be basically colorblind proof, okay? Next, I'm going to give you a quick copywriting crash course. And I'm going to share with you one of the best URLs, it's completely free, one of the best links ever when it comes to copywriting. And this actually translates into the social media content creation. So I'm going to show you my framework, which is Prime Agitation. But I'm going to show you also a list of 100 different frameworks to test from. I'm also going to show you the ones that are overused. Then I'm going to show you how to structure your inbound sales questions that will mirror the ultimate closing methodology. And I'm going to show you how to embed that form into your calendar. So this is going to be super fast. Then we're just going to embed the calendar. Then we're going to discuss tags and automations. So I'm going to show you how you can not only use uh, conditional logic in your form, which will essentially disqualify leads from being able to sign up for a book call. So if they're not even qualified, we don't want them on the calls. And then the ones that attend the call, we're going to I'm going to show you how to use contact tagging based off of the interaction. So if they show up to the call, if they... Uh, well, if they book a call, number one, if you close them on the call, if they're a maybe or a soft no, if they're a hard no, if they're a no show, any kind of interaction, maybe they go for, you know, plan one versus plan two versus plan three. Maybe they go for plan one and then an upsell, whatever interaction, I'm going to show you how to build it. Now, the reason that this is going to be a little faster pace is, is because it's going to be very technical in terms of the rationale behind it. And then in terms of the step-by-step -step creation of the funnel and the technical aspect behind it. That being said, I'm going to show you the technical side, which means there are limitations to the application. What do I mean by that? I'm not going to show you on this call how to do contact tagging for your specific business. I'm going to say, these are the ways that I would do it. Here's how to set it up. And then it's up to you to put on your, your big boy or your big girl pants and essentially say, cool, how do I want to do it? Now, if you have questions on how you want to do it, Obviously, at the end of the call, you guys know I'm a sucker for it. I stay way longer than I need to every single time, and I will help you with it. But this call is going to be very fast paced. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, the first thing I want to cover is the psychology behind it. This will be very, very brief. Uh, if you're wondering why I continuously come back and share with you the psychology behind it, it is because a, ma a majority of you are refuse, not, a, I'm not gonna say everyone on this call, but a majority of the people within the community are refusing to follow the process. And so they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, I'm having issues because uh, I don't know what, well, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I'll go, well, did you do, like, what are you, what are you doing right now? And they'll say, for example, DMs. And I go, great. So if you're on the step four DMs, that means you should already have 
your lean funnel put together and you should already have a, a very simple uh, content structure that's already out there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should already be out there. And most of the time they go, well, no, I don't have that. So a lot of people, if you're watching this call and you have access to this recording, or if you're in the call, a lot of people will come to me and say, hey, I'm having problems. I go, are you following the process? And they go, no, I'm not. The only fathomable reason that I can comprehend if you're not following the process is because you either don't understand the benefit of its structure, or you think I'm, I'm going to build the business my way, even though I've never built one before. And I'm not saying this to be rude or abrupt. I'm saying this to say, if you want to save time and make money faster, not that doesn't mean easily, but if you want to make money faster, follow in the footsteps of somebody who's already done it, right? Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Stop trying to create your own path, replicate success, and then innovate using who you are, your personality. But if you are doing, if you are in the DMs, if you're already DMing people and you have not done your lean funnel creation, if you have not done your content creation, it is not going to work. It is not going to work. Why is it not going to work? Well, let's cover it. As you can see, this is the, um, this is the new structure that I'm building out. Um, so I've built out one, two, and three, and three is actually what we're covering today. So step uh, three is actually the former, the step two that you guys know. So everything moved up one because I put in a little intro to cover basic marketing stuff, you know, yada, yada, all stuff that you guys, if you're on the call, you already know. So we have uh, module three, and then we have module four and module five and module six. So this is former steps two, three, four, five. I'll explain. You build your lean funnel. You create inbound content, inbound welcoming content. You dirty scale for 25 clients and then you close them. So it's the exact same framework. It's just more in depth. So very quickly, ultimate closing framework. If they are inbound leads, they're going to convert higher. So we want to attract inbound leads. They will convert higher. They will convert cheaper. They're going to convert on an average of 14.7% compared to a 1.7%. And if you're using organic content, then you are attracting free leads because social media is free. If you're paying to do outbound, which is what 99% of high level affiliate coaches will tell you is they will say pay to run ads or don't run ads, but do cold calls or do cold emails. That's fine. You're paying to get a 1.7% conversion rate versus create the content that attracts the 14.7% conversion rate. Now, the re this is where the methodology comes into play is if they come in as an inbound, then they are a hot lead. They're no longer a warm lead. They are a hot lead. These are the er easiest to convert. The way we convert them is where are you? Where do you want to be? So if I am here and I want to be there, you can easily identify the gap in between the two, right? Because here and there are not the same. Nobody's going to say I'm at 5,000 a month and I want to stay at 5,000 a month. No, it's going to be I'm at 3,000. I want to be at 10,000. I'm at 5,000, but my profit is only 40%. I want to be at 5,000 with a profit of 75%. I want to go from here to there. That is always what happens in a sales call. Otherwise, they're not going to be attracted to you. And that's going to be key. So on the sales call, we want to understand where are you? Where do you want to be? That's the gap. What have you tried to do to bridge this gap? We're trying to understand what have you tried in the past so we can either figure out where it went wrong. And we want to understand if they have tried something and maybe they've tried the exact same thing that you're about to try, you need to explain why you're going to do it in a different way. So you're basically arming yourself, right? If somebody's, if you talk to somebody who's like, Hey, I've been injured in the past. You're like, Hey, you want to go skiing? And they're like, Oh, well, that's how I got hurt. It's probably not going to, probably not going to go too well. Right? So what you need to do is you need to say, Hey, what kind of, you know, what have you tried in the past? Well, I tried SEO and I hated it. Okay, cool. Tell me more about that. And then you go into discovery, right? So that is where the, the closing methodology comes in. If you guys are just joining, this, uh, we're going super fast pace. I'll have the recording up, but it'll be private. So it's not going to be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube, but it'll be private. It won't be public listed. So that's the closing methodology. So again, with the closing methodology, that means hot leads are coming in because they're inbound. And we need to understand the exact information that we are essentially collecting so we can close them much easier. So Let's reverse engineer. If we want to close easily, then we need to essentially have hot leads. Now, when you have a hot lead, 
if you are starting out and you know you need social media uh, content, what you're not going to do, and I see people trashing social media all the time in the high-level group because they have no idea what they're talking about. The brain cells, they're just, I don't know if they're not functioning. I don't know if the synapsis is not connecting. They think that when somebody like me tells you to make social media content that I'm saying, hey, uh, my name is Gary V in the year is 2020, and I think you're going to go viral on social media. No, you're, that's not the point of social media. It is not to go viral. It has never been to go viral. It has been to create niche-specific viral claims because this will essentially allow you to fast track your results when you are antithetical. Everything is reverse engineered from success. So what do I mean by that? If you, and I've, if you're in the coaching communities, uh, some of you guys maybe are familiar with this, but if you're trying to essentially catch fish, what you're going to do is you can either go fishing with a rod, you can go spear fishing with a spear gun, or you can throw a net in the water. Now, the net is going to collect more. The net is equivalent to the social media content. However, the net or your social media content is not going to go viral. On the other hand, if you go out with a spear gun, we already know the conversion rate on outbound is 1.7%. So how do we get the 14.7% to be our lead generator? We're going to take the spear gun and we're going to chase a school of fish into the net. And if you miss the harpoon and you don't hit the fish, guess what? You still scared them into the net. What am I referring to? I'm referring to steps four and step uh, well, in this case, it's step five and step four, but the former step three and step four, I'm referring to content creation and outbound DMS. You are setting up a net and then you are chasing the fish into your net. You're chasing the leads into your content. What do we talk about in step one? What do we talk about in step four in the original training, the ultimate downsell. So if you already have the net created and they pull back and they're not interested, they, they ghost you, they ignore you, whatever you say, check out the social media. There's more free content on there. And if you have any questions, problems, you're stuck, let me know. I'll make content for you. That is the net. If you're able to, with the spear gun, use your marketing audit and push to a call, then great, you've hit the fish. But if you, ch if you miss, you can chase them off into the net versus I have to close or not close. That's way too much pressure. Studies show that it takes seven interactions for somebody to close with you. Seven touch points. So if you chase them to your social media, guess what you're doing? You're retargeting them. Within a week, you will have hit them seven times. I'm not saying seven days is going to equal that lead becoming client, but it's going to be seven meaningful touch points. So we have to use these two in tandem. You cannot, listen to me very clearly, you cannot start DMing before you have content going. And once you have content going, it needs to be consistent. If you are struggling with making content, it sh I'm going to cover that on this call. It is not hard. You pick up the phone, you record yourself. I don't care if it looks like you recorded it on a Nokia. I don't care if it looks like you recorded it on a TI-81 calculator. I don't care if you recorded it on a you know, microwave from the 1990s. I do not care. The content needs to go up. I've told you guys time and time again, I've seen the worst content convert. It doesn't matter. So and I'm going to cover, I'm going to explain to you guys, for those of you who joined the call a little late, I'm going to show you the exact, there's over a hundred frameworks I'm going to share with you today. All of you have access to this, over a hundred frameworks that you're going to have access to today on how to create your social media content if you absolutely hate mine of problem agitation. And so what does that boil down to? It boils down to what we're going to talk about in the call today, the high converting digital assets, specifically in this case, a lean low drag funnel. So that is how this goes. The funnel, if you're looking at this chronologically speaking, we have to build the funnel first. Why do we have to build the funnel first? I'm going to bring us right back to this image you guys probably are sick of, and then we're going to hop into the funnel. So right here, you have to, when the customer journey is traffic to conversion to fulfillment. So let's look at this. Ignore fulfillment because we're talking about these two. This traffic is steps three and four. It is content and DMs, but you have to have somewhere to push them. That is the same. If we look at this, you can say traffic is DMs and conversion mechanism is content. You have to have somewhere to push them. The ultimate downside doesn't work. If you're like, hey, go check out my page. There's nothing there. It's completely boring. It's barren. Uh, it has you know less fertility than the Sahara Desert. That doesn't make sense. So you have to have content. And then let's assume the content becomes a traffic and you have to have a funnel, right? You have to have somewhere to push them. You can't say in your content 
or in your DMs, hey, let's book a call. And they're like, cool, where's the link? And you're like, I don't have one. It makes no sense. You can't say in your content, hey, book a link or book a call link in the bio. And there's no link in the bio. It makes no sense. So that's why when we look at the creation journey, the, the chronological steps of fulfillment is you need to be able to understand how to fulfill what you're trying to do. We covered that on last week's call. It is so simple. You find somebody who can do it. You speak the language enough. You package their services into what you're doing. You three to five X the value. And then you go from there. You fall on your face. You learn as you go. You do it as ethically as possible. You set expectations. When expectations are not met, you revisit and say, hey, this is going outside the scope. So we either need to do it my way or we need to part ways. That's the whole process of fulfillment. Let's look at conversion mechanism. The conversion mechanism is a cash register. It is a cash register. Okay. You are not closing at the cash register. Even if that is physically where a decision is made, the cash register is to collect payment. It's to collect payment. That is it. There is, I, I, I'm all for taking care of uh, orphans and widows and all these nonprofits. There's nothing more annoying to me when I go to Walmart or McDonald's and they're like, hey, do you want to round up to this random charity that we're just going to use to write off our own taxes? That's annoying to me because it slows down me checking out. That, it, that creates a high drag funnel. Even if it's one additional step, it's annoying. What the, there's a whole bunch of memes where they talk about, oh, I, I paid to, you know, pick up a soda from Sheets or gas station. And they turn the screen around. They're like, oh, it's going to ask you a question. It's like, you know, what kind of tip do you want to do? That's annoying because it's an extra step in something that it shouldn't, there shouldn't be an extra step in, right? So the conversion mechanism needs to be lean. The traffic generation, whether it's the content, whether it's the DMs, that is where the buying decision is made. Additionally, in the um, traffic and in the conversion is going to be the sales call. On the sales call, we talk about this all the time. Where are you? Where do you want to be? That's the gap. What have you tried to fix this gap? Why do you want me to fix the gap? Right there tells you they can't do it on their own. They need you to do it. They came to me, which is going to sell them on you because, uh, well, I came to you because I love your content. Cool. That tells me that you're on a you're a hot lead, right? You're a warm lead, not hot, like physically attractive, hot as in like ready to buy. And so then we go, cool, let me show you how we're going to bridge the gap. That's why we, when we bridge the gap, we do a three to five minute presentation at most because it is all low drag. Hey, I told you we can fix it. Here's how we can fix it. They're already getting on the call, ready to go. They're just figuring out the details and the, the objections. So this is what we're covering today, this conversion mechanism. The reason we are covering this today, and for those of you that joined a little later, this is what we're covering. The reason we're covering this today is because the conversion mechanism should be done within 24 hours. You are not building a website. That is way too many steps. You are not building the, a crazy book funnel. You don't have a book. You don't even know what to write a book on. You're not building anything except for a lean, low drag funnel. That is what we're going to jump into right now. Before I do that, do we have any questions? Like I said, we're going, like, this call is going to be very fast paced. Do we have any questions? One thing I will say, this document that I have right here, it will be shared when we re-release the courses just, just before 2024. I'm not going to be sharing it with you right now. All these hyperlinks I will be sharing with you. So if you need to pop open a Google Doc, and if you want to make your own notes and copy these links, if you want to bookmark these links, these are all public links except for one. So I will share them with you. You guys save them however you want. I'm not going to be sharing this because, like I said, this is still a rough draft. Um, and I'm not really a fan of no one on this call, but I've had a few people I've kicked out of the group because I've caught them trying to steal the content and make it their own. Yeah, Grant. Hey, so when you're recording like headshot videos, you know, explaining something, do you um like kind of batch produce it or do you just like take out your phone and just like single recording, just start talking and then edit? Love it. Great question. So to, to give you a little context to my answer, we know we're not going to go viral on Facebook, right? Yeah. We know we're not going to go viral on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Your depth, if, if you, if this is brand new news to you, Instagram, you have zero chance of going viral on Instagram. I don't care if someone's like, let me show you how to make, go famous with your reels. It doesn't work. You know who goes viral on Instagram? It's people who just repost like 
uh, Andrew Tate crap and they're like, um, yeah, you know, uh, or, you know, wh whatever they're doing, right. It's, it's never like high quality content. So let me, um, you can see my notes from one of my coaching calls. Like this is absolutely crazy. So let me try to, um, erase all this. So when we are creating content, this is the exact flow when it comes to, let me zoom in just a little bit. I don't realize we're so far zoomed out. Okay. This is the exact flow of social media content. Okay. So pay very close attention. When we are using social media, these are the four main ones that you need to go in. Okay. Four main ones. You can go into Snapchat. You can go into Twitter or X. You can go into Pinterest. I'm actually going to be testing out Pinterest uh, early in the next new year to see how that goes. But these are the four you need to go into. I'm going to show you the order. Okay. Facebook, number one. Why is Facebook number one? Because, and, and Grant, this answers your question, so bear with me. Yeah. Facebook is number one because your clients are going to be on Facebook. It is going to be a very easy platform. And no matter what content type you make, Facebook can handle that medium. You have a Spotify uh, podcast, you can repost the link on Facebook. You have a TikTok you made, you can repost it on Reels. You have a YouTube video, you can post a link. You can even post a direct video into Facebook and have the whole video there. I don't care what type of content you have, it can go on Facebook, right? So Facebook has your ideal clientele and it, has, it can host every medium of content, right? Number two, chronologically speaking, is YouTube. Why YouTube? Because on YouTube, you can host your VSL. So you can put in your bio, you can say, hey, how I took somebody from X to Y in Z days. And you can have a link straight to a YouTube video. So YouTube is going to be your long form indoctrinating content. The rule of seven, if you remember the uh, step three training. Yeah, Naman, what's up? Okay, sorry. I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to uh, trace back. Like, so this is like to where like we would um, paste the links for our funnels or our funnel. So you, yeah, you would post your, you post your links in your bios, but this is the content order. So if you are using social media, the first medium you should be using is Facebook. The second medium would be YouTube. Got it. Okay. Like, in, well, I mean, if you have all of them, it's like, I mean, you're posting or, or like you're getting your funnel in. in I'm, I'm going to show you that. Yeah. I'm going to show you that because the answer is not exactly. I'm going to show you that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but no, your, your mind is in the right spot. You're, you're actually asking exactly where I'm going to go. So you're asking the right questions. Okay. So number, number, number two is YouTube for the long form. And that's going to tie into the, and I can come over here. So in the funnel creation, which I'm going to show you my actual high level, the, the sub, uh, I have a test sub account, but in the high level, when we talk about the fastest funnel ever, what you can do is you can have a link in your bio. And instead of like, no, I just asked, would it go to my funnel? Instead of the link in the bio, you can have it go to a YouTube video and the YouTube video can be the VSL. So we can go link to VSL on YouTube. And then let's just copy this to a form to a text. This is the fastest funnel ever that you can create. If you do not have this, because it is brand new, this becomes optional. And you would go straight from link to form to text. What would that look like? Link in bio to book a call. When they fill out a form, not a calendar, pay attention, not a calendar. When they fill out a form, the form is what's your name? What's your phone number? What, where are you currently? Where do you wanna be? That's it, that's it. When they click submit, you can have an automation text them after two or three minutes and kickstart the conversation. However, you had better be, you know, on your phone, you better have your phone with you to handle that conversation. Or this can, instead of uh, texting for you, this can send an internal notification to you to say, hey, text this lead. You now have their number. That is the fastest funnel you can create because all it requires is a link to a funnel. The funnel is strictly a form and then you can text, uh, you can text them either automatically or manually. The optional part is when you add a video sales letter on YouTube, the link goes to the YouTube video in the description of the YouTube video is the form. And then of course that goes to the text. 
Now, if you're wondering why would I add this if it's an extra step, it's a lot easier to say, hey, check out this innocent video of a case study that's more interesting than just saying, hey, go fill out a, a, you know, a calendar form or hey, go fill out a form. So you can say, hey, check out this case study and you can rotate it every week or you can just have a single uh, you know, YouTube VSL. And in the description of all your videos, the first thing should be, hey, book a call here, right? The call to action. This is the fastest one. I'm, and I'm going to take you through these links, so don't worry. So let's come back over here because I want to answer Grant's question. So one to two is YouTube. We explained why. Before I continue, does anybody know what I mean when I say comparative versus absolute advantage? Elaborate. I, I'll elaborate. Does, any, does anyone know before I do? I mean, I do, but that's because you told me on our call. Do you want to answer, though? Sure, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll put Christian on the spot and see if he pays attention. Yeah, so basically comparative is where Facebook, just for example, is super good. And let's just, for the example, really good at photos in short form. And then YouTube is a lot better for long form. So it's not that one's better than the other as a whole but only for specific kind of content. I hope yeah. I don't butcher that, but. No, no, that's very good. Yeah, so, right. so essentially it's somebody has a strength in one category that surpasses the, the same category for another. That is, a com that is a comparative advantage. Then you have absolute advantage. So absolute advantage would be they're just the best all around, right? Again, I'm, this is oversimplifying. So if anyone's watching, they don't agree with it. I, I really could care less, uh, but that's the point of it. So if you remember in the step three training, this is where, this is where what I'm telling you is very different. This is why what I'm going to be putting in this call, I'm probably not going to be posting on YouTube. So what I'm going to teach you right here, I had a friend of mine teach me, he taught it to me for free, but it's part of his uh, $6,000 course. So pay attention. You use the platforms to their strengths. You use the platforms to their strengths. So let me, uh, let me ask, uh, and if you're in the coaching program and you already know the answer to some of these questions, give the others a chance and then hop in. So uh, I'm not just sitting here by myself. TikTok, what is TikTok good at? What would you say TikTok is good at? Best guesses. Uh, short form video to um, an audience that hasn't seen you. Beautifully said. Short form video to an audience who hasn't seen you. So when we're looking at short form content, you have two options. You have attention and you have retention. You have attention, you have retention, okay? Attention, uh, yeah, Google always does this to me every time I put up the number two. Attention, retention. Attention, retention. I'm gonna say it one more time. Attention, retention. TikTok is good at attention, which means it will attract new people. It is not good at retention. So it's comparative advantage the category in which it excels is attracting attention. Is anybody sick of me saying the word attention yet? Attention. It becomes number three. Why does it become number three? Because on TikTok, guess what you can link? Your Instagram or your YouTube. You can link your YouTube. So now what you have is you have Facebook pushing to YouTube and you have TikTok pushing to YouTube. Now, this is not yet connected yet. TikTok starts connecting. But remember, Facebook is the hub because of its, its absolute advantage when it comes to generating local traffic. It's just an absolute monster, right? So how do we connect all of this? Here is our missing, ugly, little connector. Here is our ugly, little sheep. Facebook and Instagram link through what? I'm not going to spell too much because this is painful for me as it is for you. Meta. It links through Meta. So you can, in the Meta business suite, whatever you post on Facebook can go to Instagram. Now, we're not going to post like that. I'll explain. Then TikTok can link to Instagram. Why is this important? Grant. I'm going to pick on you because you were nice enough to participate. What did we say TikTok was good at? Attention or retention? Attention. Attention. So if TikTok is good at attention, what do you guys think Instagram is good at? Retention. 
retention. Now, has anyone tried to grow an Instagram profile or an Instagram account? Yes. How painful was it? I'm not even going to ask how was it. How painful was it? I feel it was a little bit easier like four years ago, but um, it was still pretty painful. Yeah. T nowadays, it's very painful. So what do you do? On TikTok, it's good at attention. TikTok is terrible at retention. You cannot DM a, a TikTok profile. It goes straight to message requests, and those don't even show up unless you enable it. You cannot DM with somebody unless you are friends with them. You have to both be following each other. Instagram is very different. So you can have attention-oriented content that pushes to Instagram, and you can say, hey, if you want this lead magnet, if you want to ask me a question, if you want to blah, 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 go over to my Instagram, and on my Instagram, you can DM me, and I'll send you whatever I said I was going to send you in this video. That is how you go to the Instagram. It is strictly nurturing. So let's look at these all in play. And this is a very long-winded answer, but this is also exactly uh, what we cover down here in this call. So we'll just go backwards uh, right here, the framework. So when we look at this type of content, when we're talking about a funnel, so content relative to the funnel, we have three types of content. We have top of funnel, mid funnel, bottom funnel. Does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Just uh, add like a little emoji at the bottom, well, emoji reaction, whatever. Does anybody not know what I mean when I say top, mid, and bottom? <laughs> Okay, everybody, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Could, could you give us a refresher? Sure. So top of funnel is attention. Mid funnel is retention and pushing them down. Bottom funnel is right before the conversion. The, the concept behind it is, is top of funnel knows very little of what you're doing. Mid funnel is familiar. Bottom funnel is like, I'm ready to buy. For whatever reason, I haven't bought yet, so I'm just going to keep consuming this really rich, in-depth content. The whole purpose is to push them down to the form. So when we're doing that, let's look at the ratio of content types that we need to make, okay? Let's start with Facebook. Facebook, you're pushing people over with the ultimate downsell because Facebook's going to be where you're doing a majority of your DMing. You're pushing people over with the ultimate downsell. You have people who are going to be finding your account because you're engaging and they see your business profile or you're sharing your page and they want to go check out who you are. So the ratio on Facebook is going to be, and these are rough numbers, so you don't have to stick to them 100%, four, five, one. So for every 10 pieces of content, four should be top of funnel, five should be mid funnel, and one should be bottom funnel. If you're wondering what that looks like, just in case you were too afraid to say something, bottom funnel is very in-depth knowledge. It is status delta content. It is very advanced information. It is, I'm talking to somebody who knows what I'm doing. I'm not even going to bother making the introduction. It is just very in-depth content. Mid funnel. Mid funnel is you are solving problems that are a little more advanced. And top of funnel is you are agitating the audience and you're essentially uh, answering problems in a way that brings awareness to who you're doing, uh, to who you are, to what you're doing. Okay. So this is very beginner friendly. This is attention. This is retention. This is uh, status Delta. If we look at TikTok, what somebody uh, who has not already heard this before, somebody guess what the TikTok ratio is going to be, or at least where do you think it's going to be focused? Top of funnel. Pop a funnel. Here is the ratio. Seven, two, one. Way more focused on top. And you can, if you're like, I don't like these numbers because, you know, whatever, you can go, you know, three, six, one. You can go uh, three, five, two. But this, these are the ratios that I've seen have, have done the best. So seven, two, one. What is seven, two, one? Seven is attracting new people. Two is a little bit more in depth for people who just follow your content. And one is every once in a while, you just need to tell them, hey, you know, book a, book a call, right? The one is a really nice call to action. It is just straight, just straight go here, okay? On YouTube, can anybody guess the ratio? 
Actually, let me let me not do YouTube yet because YouTube's gonna mess with your head. Instagram, who can guess the ratio on Instagram? You can type it if you don't want to talk. Is it still top of funnel? So Instagram, remember, what's the, what's the strength of Instagram? Is it attention or retention? Uh, retention, so. So, ch so check it out, ready? You're looking at zero, 10, zero. Are you... It is all mid funnel content. What is the purpose of middle funnel content? It is to view you as an expert and it is to ask for, uh, to have call to actions that are not form or link oriented. So the call to action might be, hey, if you want to see a case study and then in the DMs, you could close. So again, if you're like, I don't like your numbers, great. You can go one, eight, one if you really want. But this right here is the, is the more clear method. And guess what? On Instagram, uh, we'll talk about that later, but basically it is all nurturing because they're coming from TikTok or from Facebook. The only people who message me on Instagram are people who come from TikTok. That is it. Some people will come from YouTube occasionally, uh, occasionally if they want to DM you, but usually they don't go backwards too, too often. You're not going to, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really follow people on social media because that's all their YouTube uh, very often, right? So you'll very rarely have something go backwards. Anybody want to guess the YouTube? Or you close? Or like uh, 118? YouTube is going to be one. You could say here we could go, uh, let's see, four. Five. Here's the trick. This, and you could even say, before I tell you the, the cool part, you could even go one, six, three. So somewhere in this ballpark, here's the cool part. This all takes place in the same video. All takes place in the same video. You're not going to have top of funnel content. You're not going to have mid funnel content. You're not going to have bottom funnel content. You're going to take them from unaware to aware to motivated and having actionable advice. That is the whole purpose of a YouTube video. That's why when we talk about the YouTube video length, it should be ideally be eight to 20 minutes. When we talk about short form reels, it should be under 50 seconds so we can repost it. Now here is, if you don't take anything from this call, I want you to take these ratios and listen to what I'm about to tell you. So focus very clearly to what I'm about to tell you. We are not going to just repost all of the content across all the platforms. We're not. We're going to follow these ratios at the peak, okay, at the peak. This is why we start with Facebook, because most of you are not yet ready to jump into doing all these different ratios on all these different accounts. I'm just getting there with Instagram and TikTok. Okay? So this is stuff that I have done. If you're wondering, like, well, how do you know what you're talking about? This is stuff that we have done with clients that has made them a stupid amount of money. So this is where this come from. This is also coming from experts who told me how to do this, who then I told other people and it crushed for them. I do it with my clients. It crushes for them. This is what they do. The number one mistake I see with my clients when it comes to content creation, that they will come to me and they will show me their socials and they're posting the same thing on TikTok as they are on Instagram. Look at the ratios. Doesn't that contradict? So that's where we have the step three training, which is the conjugate hybrid social media approach. What we do is we take the competitive advantage of every platform and we pair them together. So TikTok focuses here. Mid, mid funnel content focuses here. All right. YouTube are longer form videos. So why do we focus? Why do we start with Facebook? Because Facebook is a nice balance where if you start here, this four can come over here into this seven. This five can come over here into this 10. This one can be a, uh, a little bit more in depth and it can be the YouTube video. So when you're creating the content, you can start with Facebook, master Facebook. Once you mastered Facebook, I don't mean you're famous and viral and everyone knows you and they follow your Facebook page like it's 2011. No, 
What I'm saying is you are confident, you have a system, you have your operations down pat on Facebook. That's where you start bleeding into these other areas. And you start by yes, reposting, but you're not just, you're not just saying anything on Facebook is, you know, anything on Facebook is going here and here and here. No, it is a meticulous breakdown in understanding. So super long-winded answer because I wanted to go backwards. What I'm going to do is after this, I'm going to show you the exact framework. But to answer your question, and finally, Grant, when you're making content, there's two ways to do it. You can either, A, you can make it in, um, essentially, you can make it in uh, for Facebook specifically, and then you can branch off, or you can make it for specifically for Instagram and then post to Facebook, specifically for TikTok and then post to Facebook, specifically for YouTube and post to Facebook. That doesn't mean you're starting with these three profiles and then going here. It's just saying, I want to create this with the intention of having it on YouTube as well. So then let's say you're posting, you know, two times a week on Insta on TikTok, once on YouTube, maybe three times on, on Instagram. And if it's all going to Facebook, you now have six posts a week. So that is a really easy way because again, you're not going to go viral on Facebook. So you don't have to worry about, well, the TikTok has metadata and there's websites where you can download it without the TikTok watermark. If it has the metadata in there that says it's from TikTok, again, the purpose is not to go viral. It's just so that when they come and see the content, you have it. If you are trying to go viral anywhere, it should be right here because this is the only interest-based platform. You're going to see people's content who you don't follow. This is the only, this is the only platform where you're going to see this on a regular basis. Here's another one where it's interest-based, but again, YouTube uses similar audiences. So if you're following someone who's similar to whatever content you're making, they will see that. If uh, you are similar to the people from Instagram coming over to YouTube or from TikTok to YouTube, it may try to retarget you, right? These algorithms, you need to put the pressure on them to do the work for you. The algorithms will do some work for you, but we're not going to rely on them like all of these and there's really no other word to describe it. I don't know if it's like brain dead or if they're just trying to push a narrative. Anyone who says like, well, don't use social media because you have to rely on the, the algorithm. No, nobody in their right mind is relying on the algorithm. We're using the algorithm. And when I say use the algorithm, basically what I'm saying is you post on TikTok and then that goes to Facebook. That's all I mean by what I say, uh, use the algorithm. Right. Well, I you appreciate wanna... the response because this changed my whole perspective on the content awesome. side. Awesome. And now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow everyone's mind. If you check in the Google Meet chat, I just posted a link. If you can ref just keep it there for now, don't open it now because I'm going to open it right now for you. So I want you guys to focus on what I'm sharing. I had a mentor of mine share this with me. There's over a hundred different copywriting formulas. When I share with you my formula, let's come back here. My formula is a font. Okay. Agitate, frame, old way bad, new way good, call to action. That is my framework. What does this do for you? I told you guys I'm sharing everything with you. I'm going to share with you one of my own documents that I use for my actual business right here. Look at the top line, uh, agitate, frame, old way bad, new way good, call to action. This is one of my content structures that I'm making with one of my, with one of my um, subject matter experts. This is the framework. It just becomes the script. It just becomes the script. So let's come over here and I'm going to share with you one. When I saw this, it made me laugh because it's the same framework everyone uses. So if you look, everyone, everyone has this doc. If you look at this, look at all of these frameworks. It even has headline formula. Guys, I'm putting you on like some serious knowledge right here. So I'm going to cover the frameworks and then I'll cover the um, headlines because the headlines are, look at these headlines. This is going to, I'm telling you, if you thought what I just told you changed your business, this is going to change everything. I'm going to start with, uh, let's go pass. What is pass? Problem, agitate, solution. Doesn't that look familiar? 
I didn't reinvent the wheel. I evolved it. That's it. There's so many different ones. Who's, who's heard of Ada? Just give me a thumbs up. Who's heard of Ada? Right here. What statement? I'm going to ask a really stupid question. Somebody just play along. Does that say statement or does that say question? Statement. Statement. Do not ask your audience a single question in your hook. Don't. Please don't. So look, Ada, other people have uh, expanded on this. Aidka. It's the same thing, but you have to add conviction. How do I prove my product works? For me, the conviction, I call the conviction the frame, right? I just do that earlier. So they do it in step four. I do it in step two. And I even have told some of you in the coaching program, I've shown you how you could do it in step one. Idka, you get rid of attention. Wait a minute. If I'm not gathering attention, what's the opposite of attention? Retention. So this is great for mid-funnel content. Idka, because we're cutting out, uh, you know, the, um, the attention part. Now, don't follow this example. This example is terrible. I'm a best-selling author, so you can trust me. I mean, that sounds like something a, a, you know, a you know, kidnapper would say to a kid. But four Ps, picture, promise, prove, push. You want to see my favorite one? You guys are going to see this. Quest. In your copy, you are stating at the beginning, stating, this offer is only for a select few. Something like, Somebody tell me right now that doesn't sound like every single social media ad you've ever seen in your life. Where they ask a question to qualify. Isn't that every single person on social media? They're using the quest. Every single one of them oh, use and abuse the quest. Why are they using and abusing the quest? Because when you, this is why I focus so much on teaching you guys the underlying concepts. When you focus on doing exactly what somebody tells you to do. When you focus on following the exact script somebody tells you to, to do, what happens? You burn out Quest, everybody and their mother uses Quest, literally, and then people keep using Quest because they don't understand the psychology behind the sales methodology, behind the content creation framework. Nobody, so few people understand it. So now you have this document, you have so many different methods. Don't use Quest. If, you, if you're using Quest, I will find you, I will, you know, Liam Neeson taking you and I will slap you through the phone. Don't do it. Don't ever start a video with a question. What you can do is you can use this framework, but if you use it, so, so use the frameworks they give you. Do not use the examples they give you. Because look at this. In your copy, you're stating at the beginning that this offer, if you are just actually stating, this is a question. That's not a statement. That's a question. Here's another version of this that people learned from Quest because all they did was evolve Quest. They didn't use anything else. If, uh, who's heard this one before? Hey, if you're a small, if you're not a small business owner, go ahead and keep scrolling. Who's heard that before? All the time. Hey, if you're, if you're not my ex-boyfriend, keep, keep scrolling, right? That's what everyone does. They're just evolving the Quest. There's so many different ones. Let me show you one of my personal favorites. Slap is a good one too. Stop, look, act, purchase. It's very aggressive. And I haven't seen a single ad that doesn't use Quest. I'll be honest with you. Uh, maybe you guys can send me one and maybe I'm blind, but let me show you one of my favorite ones. Right here, this crazy one. Ab, whatever, right? This is very similar to what I do. Look, attention. State up front the biggest challenge. Problem agitation. Interest. Why we must believe in you. Doesn't that sound like framework? Credibility. So they kind of do the framework twice. But this would be like, for example, this would, somebody give me an industry. I'll make one up for you right now. Whoever responds first, I'll make you up content right now. Just an emoji, whatever. Residential contracting. Great. What's the biggest issue that you've seen in residential contracting? Just to give you a starting point. They all buy, they all buy leads from Angie and like third party. Awesome. Can't tell you how many times I have contractor clients come to me and they are, no, you know what? Let me start over. I'd say this. Contractors are so sick and tired of marketers because they're continuously buying low quality recycled leads, which causes them to never want to hire another marketing company again. Let me, like, if, uh, let me show you how to fix that. Let me show you how you can fix that without spending a single penny. If you don't know who I am, this is the interest. My name is Grant. I work exclusively with residential contractors. And yes, I help them with marketing. No, I'm not trying to sell you. Don't worry. 
credibility. If you're wondering, do I know what I'm talking about? We took, I don't know, what's a good residential guy's name? Jason from 12K to, to you know, 32K. So that would be the interest is why we care. The credibility is, you know, what have, what, what have you done, right? So in the framework, I kind of jump between these two, but you can have the credibility. The proof is basically the same thing, right? This is basically three versions of the exact same thing, which is why I boil it down to just a framework. Benefits. So they would just go into, hey, here's what you do and here are the benefits. And then they go into the scarcity. And this would be like, hey, but don't, you know, I'm, I have this pricing, but it's limited to the next three people to sign up. So once I hit three, I'm not going again, right? Action. If, this, if you want to be this person, if you want to be the residential contractor that I scale next, form, link in the bio, whatever, right? State negative scenarios. Now, listen, if you don't work with me, that's perfectly fine. But in three to six months, when you are still stuck in the same spot because you've taken no action and you reach out to me, my price will have increased. So now would be the time to jump on it. And there it is. Now is the time to jump on it. So this is not, this is a decent one for even like a VSL uh, layout. But this is, this is basically how you would do it. Here's another one. So again, some of these are kind of cringy. Holler at them to get hooked, emphasize with their pain, lambast at the situation or event that led to the current challenge. This is why you can see these are all, I mean, everything is a variation. This is another good one. Personal problems and pain that need to be targeted as the first step. Love the passer one. So this is, again, adding the problem and the pain. Amplify. What are the consequences? Storytelling. I love storytelling because when you do storytelling, what you do is you are not selling directly to them. Um, we talked about like a weightlifting example last time. If I'm talking to you and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to help you, uh, achieve a 315 bench. Or I'm going to help you achieve a four, a sub four minute mile. Maybe. But if I'm like, Hey, we're at, we're at a bar, we're at a restaurant. And I'm like, Oh, how was your day? And then you're like, Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. How was your day? And I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, we actually just wrapped up with a client. We got him to achieve this really cool, um, athletic feat. Oh, I'm interested, right? Because I'm not pitching it to you. I'm just telling you about the success I had with somebody else. So it makes me um, desirable. Testimonials are always nice to have here. This, this essentially reaffirms the storytelling. So for you guys, if I tell you about Zach, the long care guy I had, and I can be like, oh yeah, you can check out his testimonial. And the offer is, hey, if you want to do the same thing that Zach did, and then the response, again, these are just kind of like um, synonyms, right? They basically just use a thesaurus to make the acronym work. Response up down there, is the exact same, exact, uh, exact same thing as action. It's the exact same thing as now, right? Four S's, specific. What is that makes you a happy client? Short, keep it less than 100 words. Sizzling, did you switch from another company? Why are we better? Something like that. Speed, give credibility. So this is going to be really good for like Twitter, for tweets, right? Super hyper short form content, which again, we know if it can go on Twitter, it can go on Facebook. Anything I say can go on Facebook. Bab, this is great. Before, after, bridge. Before, this is a description of what your prospect's current situation is like. What was it like when they came to you? What was it like, right? Isn't this the exact same thing we talk about in the ultimate closing framework? After. Now you have to describe what life could be like after. Bridge. You just bridge the gap. And then, um, you know, they just give you two examples here, right? And so it goes on and on and on. And what's really cool is um, you can, if we go down, so you can see there's a ton of them. I'm not going to do this for all of them because, you know, you guys would probably fall asleep. Headlines. Look at these headlines. Uh, somebody other than Grant, give me another industry. Pressure washing. Pressure washing. You're sick of losing clients to the $99 guy, but you want to close clients on a regular basis. It's time you met the, it's time you met, uh, you know, the blah, blah, blah method, right? Real estate. You're, you're sick of, I don't, what was the biggest issue with real estate? Not finding, um, houses to list qualified buyers. You're sick of unqualified buyers. I know that's a big one for the real estate agent I work with. You're sick of unqualified buyers, but you want to close houses at a higher frequency. So it's time, it's time you learned how to achieve, how to reach X amount of clients at a fast rate. You're sick of tossing and carrying all night, but you need quality sleep. So it's time you met body comfort. Usually what this requires is the specific product. You guys don't have a specific product necessarily, but we talked about in the last call, productizing your service. And we do that by just basically naming your business. 
Mo, what's what's the name of the business again for you? Splash Wave Solutions. It's time you met Splash Wave Solutions. It's it's time you met Say So University. It's time you met the seven step zero dollar client acquisition model. That's just the headline formula, right? Here's a great one. Perform or create like um close close uh 10 10k clients like I do. How to close 10k clients like I do. Dunk like LeBron James. Uh speak company like I don't even know who that is. So I'm probably embarrassing myself. Uh prepare mouthwatering dishes like Rachel Ray. Like these are great. So look how simple this is. Four words and two of them are a proper noun. Yeah, Jacob, what's up? Yeah, so on when so I, just, I got my picture now. I go by Big Bite Reviews. I, I don't know. I just threw out there. I was like, what am I going to do? But so is that like my whole, like, that my brand then? Is that what we're basing this off? Like, say so as you, right? Splash Wiz Review. Um, I'm sorry. I forgot his whole name. But Splash Wiz is his. So I'm going by Big Bite Reviews. Like, is that what we're saying? Is like, that's our brand now? And then I got brand me? Or am I missing it? The the I'm not, so like with like he's like with domain and who who the heck am you're you're way overthinking it you're way overthinking it I always do you know me yeah so so check it out all you're doing on your if you're talking on the social media is the business page the logo you have there big bite and then it is front facing camera content and when okay. you're making content just like we're talking on the training it is a prom agitation or any one of those frameworks the reason I like prom agitation. Is because for, this is something I do. I list out the problems, and the problems are based off of the avatar analysis, which is just market research. And then you list out the problems, and then you add a frame. Why should you listen to me? Look at let me look at this one. I'm Alec, and I give away business coaching for free because you shouldn't pay fifteen hundred dollars a month to learn what I'm going to share with you. Um, let me see. I'm Alec. If you don't know who I am, I help go high-level agencies and actually run my own business, unlike most scam affiliates out there, landing four to ten k clients and charging retainer afterwards. Not that you care. Let's see how to fix your agency. Frame. What's the old way? Well, how are they currently doing it that doesn't work? And what's the symptom of it not working? If they're not getting clients, they don't have money, so they're getting frustrated. That that causes outside stress. If they're losing profit margins, they're losing money. Everything B two B is losing money, right? The new way is. Whatever the new way is, it's the opposite of the old way, or it's different. And then what are the benefits? You're making more money, so there's less stress. There's more free time. You don't have to go to sleep waking up sweating. You don't have to stress about, right? It's, that's basically what it boils down to. Less frustration, less stress, ease of mind, more money. That's it. What are your call to actions? If you're stuck in your agency, let me know where you are, and I'll make content just for you. If you're stuck with your residential contracting uh, business, let me know, and I'll make content for you. If you're stuck in your real estate business, let me know where and I'll make content just for you. If you're stuck in your restaurant business, let me know where and I'll make content just for you. Or if you want to achieve these results, book a, book a call link in the bio. Or you leave out the call to action altogether if you want them to like and follow and share. And so we talk about this in the, in the coaching program, but ideally, if you're looking at your call to action uh, ratio, for every four pieces of content, you should have a call to action. The other three, you shouldn't. So if we're coming back here, so for you, uh, Jacob, all you have to do is the business page, agitate problems that are in the restaurant business area. Then you go DM restaurant people. If they want to work with you, great. If they don't, you push them to the page. And if you are continuously following the process of creating the content, the content will eventually convert for you. And if it never converts them, that's one more follower. So when you go to tell somebody else to follow your page, you have more social proof. Ergo more likelihood that they'll follow. Ergo, more likelihood that you'll retarget and close them. And if not, then you repeat the process. That's it. So just okay. keep it keep it way simple. For you, your next step is problem, frame, create your little script. If you don't know how to create a script, throw it in a chat GPT and say, hey, help me create a script on this. I, I it, actually, but you said I overthink, right? So a lot of the stuff I should have just sent you, um, we're, we have our call tomorrow, but 
I'm being organized. I've got to, like you said, just work on the one and you know me. And I go, well, you're for for you, you just have to do it. For you, you just I have to do, do it. it. I, I, I beat myself up, dude. Like I really do. Like my mind tells me it's wrong or I did it. You know, I go so, back so, to so check it out. Thing. So check it out. Cause a lot of people are going to think this is wrong. I had a, I have another student. She made one of the best pieces of content I've ever seen a beginner make. Her name is Rachel. She made one of the best pieces of content I've ever seen a beginner make. And she was like, I don't know if it's good. You don't know if it's good because you're new. It is awkward. So let it, that's what I tell all of you guys. When you're creating content, let it be bad. Worst case scenario, you get no engagement. That's not the point to get engagement. The point is just to have content out there. If you hate it so badly after two weeks, delete it. But you need to have the content out there now. The first time, this is a story I told last time. The first time I ever did bench press, I had 85 pounds. Those two 10 plate, two pa uh, 10 pound plates. And as I went up and down, they were clinking the whole way through. It sounded like they were cheering me on. It was so bad. Okay. The first time you do anything is going to be awful. A baby doesn't come out of the womb walking, right? If a baby comes out of the womb walking, that's actually a very serious mental, like a medical condition that they're going to be very concerned about. So if you come out of the womb walking, I'm going to be very concerned that you've either been doing this and for whatever reason you said you couldn't, or hey, maybe you just got super lucky. But the, the, Odds are 99.999% of you, it's going to be crappy. It's going to be terrible. I leave out my old content on purpose so you can go back and see how crappy it was. And even off that bad content, I still closed $5,000 clients, $4,000 clients, $7,300 clients, $10,200 clients. I'm right now, I'm working with a 4K client, a $5,300 client, and a $6,200 client. Actually, it's 63 and 52, out of backwards. So the content doesn't have to be good. You, you being a perfectionist, that is actually you being afraid of just going out and doing it. The perfectionism isn't real. I can prove it right now. Is, the, is there anybody out there who is 100% perfect at everything they do? No. So why do you think that you are going to be the person who is all of a sudden perfect at what they do? I'm trying not to be. Like there's, I, there's no trying. There's no trying. Well, no. Like, watch this. I'll, I'll tell you right now. For, for any of you who are like paralyzed by fear, like analysis paralysis, which I think is a lot of you, go and fail. Go and fail because it is the best thing mentally for you. Who, who, there's, there's this whole thing called the rejection challenge where the goal is to be rejected every day for 100 days. And if you look at people on social media who do the rejection challenge, the first day they're like, like they're having a mental breakdown. The whole purpose is to be rejected once a, a day. And so they'll go up to people and they'll be like this. Hey, can I, you just ordered food. Can I have that? They're like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, hey, can I have the keys to your car? What are, what are they going to say? They're going to say no. And guess what? You're going to be okay with rejection. It, it, like, um, I'm not going to ask any one of you because I'm not trying to get canceled on Ellen DeGeneres, but um, I'm, I'm a straight man. I've dated people before my wife. If I say that one more time, she'll probably like Kool-Aid man through the wall and snap my neck. The fact of the matter is not every person that I spoke to wanted to date me. I didn't go and I'm not bashing anybody. So don't misinterpret it. Just because one woman rejected me didn't mean that I was like, cool, I'm gay now. No, I was like, all right, on to the next one. Right. The only issue is if I'm, if I'm afraid because one girl rejected me that I can't talk to a girl ever again, how am I ever going to find my wife? Right. When we talk about conversion rates, what is, what is a strong outbound conversion rate? 1.7%. That means, what is that? 98.3% have to reject you and you are still doing great. But if you're so terrified of one rejection, if you're so terrified, like what's the worst, new, what's the worst thing that's going to happen if you post a video that doesn't do well? Somebody comments and they're like, you're a loser. Maybe, maybe this first video was a loser, maybe, but I promise you the next video is going to be a little bit less of a loser. And the video after that is going to be a little bit less of a loser. And the video after that is going to be a little bit less of a loser. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, this video wasn't half bad. And we start getting into the, dare I say, decent area, dare I say, good area. That's why I'm not telling you guys, Hey, go out and best of luck, you know, screw you. I'm saying, Hey guys, you come into a Google sheet, you go to the top. And you put tactful in one column, emphasize in the next, authentic in the next, short in the next, engage in the next. And then you write out your script. 
Now, the easiest way to do it is problem agitate. Oh, here's a good one. I didn't even see this one. Problem, agitate, solution, outcome, and then another problem. Now, this is like a classic method, but you can do a problem, agitate, solution, outcome, and then call to action. So that, that's pretty close to what I'm doing. But you could say, hey, in the next video, I'll cover the new problem that solving this problem unlocks. So if you solve the problem of I've landed a booked call, the next problem is, well, how do I close that book call? And once you answer the problem of how you close a book call, the next problem is, well, how do I fulfill? How do I onboard? How do I fulfill? How do I do it well? How do I leverage the success? How do I make this easier, right? Every solution has a new problem. So here's a, that, that's a great one right there. This is probably one I'll end up using. And so that's why we use problem agitation. It's the fastest way to do it. But if you guys are not making content and you're like, I'm just going to sneak by and do cold DMs, it's not going to work. The whole beauty of the, D of the content is so that they can validate who you are. They can check out the page. There's the free retargeting. There's the seven touch points. There's the seven hour rule where you can push into long form content. You cannot skip the content creation. I don't care. I don't care what you're doing. You cannot skip content creation if you want to land leads for free. Or you can, you can go to cold calling. Sure. Good luck. You can go to door to door sales. There's a reason that died, right? Like when, when the Mormons and the Latter Day Saints find out that you can create social media content and you don't have to go door to door, I mean, watch out. Because if they use social media the way they go door to door, I mean, we might all be Mormon within the next month or two. Like, that's just the fact of the matter. So, use this framework. This framework is a massive tool. So let's come back here. So that was my framework. That was the, the sales, the, um, the list, right? Let's get into the funnel creation. Before I do that, any questions? Not a question, but uh, um, I have the, I, I don't know. I have a link to what I have um, and I can post it just for everybody to see. It's just a review. All right, you'll see where I see, like, it's, I say it sucks, but um, I'll just take it. Well, is but, it like your, yeah. your funnel or something? Yeah. Well, it's well, one, of, one of many, not the one that I actually. So let's, really... let's build this one out first because you'll see how, if this matches. So before I do All that, right. in the link, in the chat, I just posted the most powerful resource that I have a feeling that most of you are not, oh, I'm going to assume you guys are not aware of it. This support portal will tell you how to do every single thing fathomable in high level. Everything. Even if you're like, well, not everything, everything. It even tells you there's some onboarding, tells you how to price. Check this out. Uh, it will show you, not that one. Where is it? I think it's under chat somewhere. It will actually show you how to create your own chat bot. It will show you everything, everything. So what I'm going to be doing in the revamped training is I'm going to link all of the URLs that you are going to reference. Why am I showing you this? Because some people have been like, Alec, why don't you make a walkthrough tutorial? Alec, why don't you show me how to set this up? Alec, why don't you do a breakdown? Do you know why? Because high level improves every single day. How stupid would I be to create a tutorial on automations? And then the very next day, high level says, just kidding. Here's a tutorial for you. Or just kidding. We just changed the whole process. You know, I don't make, I didn't make a video on rebuilding. Guess what? They just changed the rebuilding pricing. The minute they do that, my rebuilding video becomes outdated, right? So what I'm going to do instead, I'm not saying don't use YouTube because YouTube will show you. However, these resources are much, 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 much better. Now I still use resource for, or YouTube for research, but these are way better. So look at this. If you want to, so this is how the, this is the format that's going to be. So you're going to get the access to these documents. And what I'm basically going to say, you're going to have more meat here where I'm going to say, oh yeah, go, uh, go here and set this up. And then you're going to click on the link. You're going to open it. And it's going to show you so when you have a video that's hosted in high level, here's the, 
this is a GIF, but it shows you right here how to enable this. It shows you, how do I set this up? It shows you absolutely everything that you can, you can question. And it's accurate. So if when I create this list, it updates in real time. So you're not going to be like, well, is this accurate or not? Um, you know, no shade to Dom. Who's, who has Dom's training? Dominic. Okay, <laughs> great. Go watch his videos. He will yeah. tell you in his own group chat. Oh, my videos are outdated. Yeah, they're outdated by about like three, not three. I'm being generous. Six, six, seven months. Okay. They're, they're, they're pretty much useless. Again. They're, they're useless. And, and the issue is because no shade to him. I'm not going to say anything more than that, but he tried to make tutorials. They become outdated. So he either has to be the Sean 2.0 and be like, Hey, Hey, high level coming at you. Sean coming at you. Right. Whatever he says in his videos that everyone loves. Every time Sean makes a video, he would have to make a video. Or I can just say, hey, Sean's making videos. Here you go. Why would I come in and make them, right? Look at the workflow builder. A video. And it breaks down the whole thing for you. I this my seven minute video and I can still put it in whatever playback speed I want. So what I'm going to be doing in this training, and don't worry, we're going to do it today, is I'm going to say, hey, this is what you need to do. This is the layout you need to do. Here is the technical know-how of how to do it. So we're going to jump in and we're going to go ahead and do it right now. So this first one, I'm not going to show you how to do this because it is very stupid simple. All you are doing is you are having your link which by the way, you don't even need a URL. You don't need a URL. You can get the pre the, the standard link that high level gives you and you can put it into a, you, a mini URL tool. Does anybody know what a mini URL tool is? Does it make it smaller? Just makes it smaller. It's like, it, it'll say like, uh, itty or bitty dot whatever. Yeah. yeah. No matter, were you going to, were you going to say that? What were we going to say, Naman? Yeah, okay, there you go. URL genius. So you can just take the preview link, throw it in there or whatever link you want, throw it in there. You don't even need a URL, technically speaking. Obviously, it'd be better to have one for tracking. The link can go straight to a form. Who doesn't know how to build a form? And then once it fills out, you have an automation that just notifies you, text this person. Does anybody not know how to do any one of those things? Let me know, because this is the time where I'm going to pull it up and show you. Great. Let's go on to option two. This is the one we're actually going to show you. So the low drag wireframe that the professionals use. So let's look at an example of an actual wireframe that professionals are using. We covered this in the previous call, but I'm going to build it with you. Title, video sales letter, disqualifier or process, testimonial. Let's look at another one. Oh, and this guy just changed his. So this is cool because this used to be, um, if you remember, this used to be the um, 10 blue collar millionaires. So VSL form, low lean drag or uh, lean low drag funnels. Uh, my personal favorite. Title, worst VSL I've ever seen. Calendar, process or disqualifier, followed by testimonial slash case studies. That's all that we are building. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, let me pull up my account and we're going to go into a test account and we're going to build one from scratch and you're going to see how fast that we can build it. What's your opinion on the, uh, like that prospect bacon one had the little countdown there. Um, don't do it. I think it's kind of, it's. Not cheesy. Cause like if you go back a day later, like the countdown is still there, it doesn't expire. Yeah, don't do it. It 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 comes from uh Shopify guys and drop shipping. Uh just don't do it. It's a it's a anytime you're you're lying or you're faking scarcity, it, it's not a good feel. Right. So let's go here. No step. You guys see this? No step. Okay. You guys see this, correct? Name for page. Landing page, path, 
landing page. Create funnel step. I'm going to go from blank, from blank. Does anybody want me to do a specific industry? If you do, just type in a, the industry followed by a dash and a problem. So I'm going to put the format in the chat. Industry dash main problem. If you want me to do your, I'm not going to build your funnel, but if you want me to show you an example using yours, just put that there. We'll see. I, I think high level actually had some kind of an outage if I remember. So hopefully this actually loads. Oh no, let's go. I load down the one day we're trying to do a tutorial. That's awesome. Okay. Yours works. Let me see if I, let me see if I can do it by not sharing. Let's see if maybe that's a bottleneck issue. Try one more time. You might want to I, try like a clearing cache and cookies. I don't know. That's that, like how it worked for me. It, it was just that I was sharing it. Okay. What is it doing? Add section. Okay. We're going to always going to go with full width, full width. I mean, you got, you, we're going to go one column. You guys can literally time me if you wanted to, uh, somebody give me an industry. Actually, you know what? Problem solution statement. So now what I'm going to do, so this is my section. This is going to be where my, where my title goes. Okay. Next, I'm going to click notice green, green, full width, one column search. You can, I mean, I'm telling you, you guys could time me right now. Green. Full width. Let's go. Uh, let's do two column. Blue. Actually, not even blue. Happy. Let's go up here. Green. Full width. Let's go two. Copy, copy, copy. Okay. So the frame, pay attention. Image, subheadline, paragraph. Let me come in and uh, delete these actually. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to format this one to perfection and then I'll just duplicate this one. When we do the image, uh, image editing, we're going to go width. We're never going to touch height, never touch height. So we just do like a 150, just so it's a little smaller. Uh, this is going to be, uh, let's actually do, how many do we have here? What well, I'm going to do here. Yeah, we'll do this. So we're going to go step one, don't do bad old current way. We can even say, stop doing bad old current way, old way, bad plus consequences or, uh, symptoms of old way, bad. Blue, copy. Step two. Start doing new way. I'm using caveman terminology here. New way, good. 
No way, real good. Step three. Achieve result. Celebrate victory and the death of your enemies. This is the process here. What are we going to do here? Let's do plus one column, drag, headline, previous. Oh, we don't even need previous. It's kind of stupid. Client testimonials, success stories. We could even, if you want to really be stupid, why we're better than others, right? Or you can even put, this would be why we're better than others, it can be our process, right? Now, an alternative that you can do here is you could say who we do and don't work with. And they just say who you do and don't work with. What do these become? Just your videos. These are linked. If you don't have these yet, guess what? Don't add them. If you don't have testimonials yet, guess what? Don't add them. So, so far, look at what we have here. If you don't have a VSL yet, don't add it. Now let's come over here. Green, because I forgot the section. One. Calendar. Uh, I don't want to do that just yet. Success stories. Last thing we're going to do, full width. One column. Nope, come on. What am I doing here? What's going on? There we go. Here is the layout. And then at the bottom, you can have like whatever disclaimers or legal stuff. And then, you, you know, this is, if you're like, hey, this is too much, then okay, cool. Like let's, uh, yeah. You know, let's do, I don't know, 100, 100, 100, 100, right? You, you just do it however you want to do it. The, the aesthetic is up to you. And now, so this is the wireframe. Title, VSL, calendar, our process, previous testimonials, FAQ. If you... We already saw other people who did not do this full setup. We have seen people who do do this full setup. You don't need everything. You do not need everything here. The guy with the, um, let me pull it up one more time. This dude shares his funnel. He changes his VSL all the time. It's a VSL on a form. Oh, and he added, look at this. Who, who saw this before he updated it? So I, I know one of you have. I've shown you guys this funnel before, where it was the 10 best contractors. Okay, you've seen this beforehand. Look what he added. Yes, this is crazy. These, they're doing exactly what I'm telling you guys. This is crazy. He didn't have these case studies beforehand. And I, I didn't, I didn't, I guarantee you there's 10. Let's go back and count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Was that seven, eight? No, one, two, three. Okay, he only has eight. But remember, in his original video, he said 10 blue collar millionaires, and he's got eight of the 10 right here. Right? They're doing exactly what I'm telling you guys to do. That was less than a month ago. That was, yeah, that was less than, that was like less than a week yeah. ago. And then here's your disclaimer. It's not endorsed by Facebook, not endorsed by Google. Privacy, terms and conditions. They're doing exactly, he literally evolves his funnel the same way I tell you they always do. And he's doing exactly what I told him to do. I didn't tell him to do it, but it's exactly what I would have told him. Are these fake case studies? No, these are real ones. These are his, um, 
yeah, these are the 10 blue and his original VSL he shows. Now, right. if they're fake or not, maybe he has actors, but these are actual. What I like about this guy is you can go and look up green tech property solutions. That's in the thumbnail. You can look up RRCA roofing. Eight years in roofing and never knocked on a door. I'm with, what does that say? Hippo roofing. Okay. And they're showing the brand name so you can verify that they're not fake case studies. Do you see the format? You don't have to have all of it. He, so he doesn't have a process. So you just get rid of the process. And instead of a calendar, he has a form. So you don't have to follow exactly. This is just the easiest way to do it. And how, somebody tell me how fast I built that. So wait, wait, wait. So let's look in the Google chat. Mo said, not working for me at 856. So mine worked. Let's just, let's assume it worked right at 856. Then at 904, Nick says, are these fake case studies? Let's assume he asked that the minute we got on that website. That means I just built out the, the wireframe, not saying the funnel, the wireframe in eight minutes. Let's go to colors. I told you, I'm showing you guys everything today. Let's go to colors. Start the generator. We want white, black. We want one main color. We want one soft color. And we want a tertiary different color. Listen very carefully. These are the codes you want. Six zeros, black. I'll prove it to you. One, two, three, four, five, six, black. Then you're going to want six Fs, FF, 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 white. Now you can have an off-white, which would be zero F, zero F, zero F. So this could be uh, off-white where it's basically it's a color between white and black. F0, 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 anti-flash white. So these can be three colors right away, locked out of the gate. Let's lock in. Let's lock in white and black. We don't really need off-white. What we're going to do is we're, we are going to look for specifically two variations of one color, a dark and a light, and a third color that is completely opposite. So an example would be dark blue, light blue, and then red dark blue, light blue, and then yellow, dark blue, light blue, and then lime green. It needs to stand out. So let's go and do it right now. So somebody give me a color. Just, just one color, just throw it out there in the chat. Red, blue, green, purple. I, I don't care. Just throw me a color. Teal is too specific. So we'll go. Let's go blue. Steel blue. I'm looking now for a soft blue. We might need to get rid of teal blue. Actually, I might need to get rid of these so we can see the uh, full color palette. Uh, it's not quite light cyan. So that's a blue variation. There's your light blue and dark blue. Now, here we go. Black. White. And spring green, there's your color palette right there. A dark blue, a light blue, and the neon green. Why am I picking this color palette? Well, black and white are going to be classy, and they're going to make sure that you don't give somebody cancer of the eye. We do not want eyeball cancer because you have just, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not even going to say the word to describe it. I, I don't want it to look like you just reached into a, Crayola paint slab and just threw paint. Like this is not the postmodern art exhibit. Okay. So white and black are going to help you for your background colors. Then you want a light, light color one. So color one and you have a dark and a light variant, light blue, dark blue, and then something that is opposite that will stick out. This will stick out. This will stick out. Why? This will be your call to action. That's it. Your calendar buttons are going to be this color. You're going to have a button down here, and you're going to have a one column, and you're going to go and put a button, and your button is going to be, look, it did it for me, a lime, ugly, ugly color, because the goal is not to be pretty. It is not to feel pretty. It is to convert. It is to convert. You're not, I had a, I had a soccer coach who said, it doesn't matter how you score a goal. Just put the ball in the net. 
That's it. Now we're going to play with the colors in the background, but that is my call to action every single time. And when I click it, I want it to go straight to the calendar. That's it. So now what are we going to do? Now we're going to rotate. So great. Remember we did wide. We did wide for a reason. So now we're going to go to the top and this is going to be either black or it is going to be your dark color variant. So let's go with the dark color variant. Why dark color? Because we want our text ideally in white. I'm not going to do the whole thing just because it'll, we might be here for, you know, close to an hour or two, but this is what I'm trying to show you. Somebody give me an industry and a problem. I don't care what industry you could even make up a, a terrible one. Yogurt stores. Perfect. What's the issue? What's the biggest issue with yogurt stores? It's going to be promoting the fact that they're healthier alternatives to ice cream, but they're still very tasty. Uh, you, and what you could say is, you know, um, sweets that loves you back. This doesn't kind of, this doesn't really work with us being, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, if we're maybe, maybe we're marketing for, um, a yogurt store, right? So you can say, well, Actually, that's, yeah, that's what I'm going off of. I, yeah, we probably don't want to, we don't want we don't really want to go restaurants too much because, you know, product, those are product-based facilities. So if we go service-based, somebody give me just a service-based business. Bye-bye. How about, uh, towing company or a towing Great. Tow industry? Great. So towing industry, they want to tow more cars, right? People hate when they get towed. Right there, done. Background for the uh, VSL. I'm probably I'm not a fan too much of uh, how much I brought in the video, so I'd probably you know bring this down to like fifty, 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 and so we'll probably add a little bit. So then I would probably just uh, I'd probably make this a little bit bigger, so more padding here. Uh, so we'd go 50-50. Oh, you could even, actually, this one, we can go a little bit bigger. And then I could change the font a little bit. I could bring it in a little bit, right? But I'm just showing you how fast we can build it. This could even be a background image, and I could have a out little outline of tow trucks. VSL, calendar. And if you want to, you could even take this I don't know if we can move it up there, but we could even come in here and do a uh, video. There you go. Let's do that instead. And let's can this one. And then the calendar is going to be a white background. So you can have a lot of space, right? This, we probably add a little padding between the uh, two. So it's not, you know, right up in its, um, well, not that much. Like I don't want it right inside of it, right? It's just like, I don't need it up in there calendar then right here so here's what we do you go color white background and then this background would be uh either color one or it would be black and then i would change all this coloring to white and then the next section right here would be white and then this section would be color one variant so I'm basically just going to change this, right? So basically what you're going to do is you're going to rotate between white, so main color, white, black. White, and then main color, and then white, black. That is how you get your branding down. And your call to action on all of these is going to be this nice lime, painfully vibrant green. I can even have uh, column one. 
duplicate because this green is so opposite the main color that it stands out. Okay. Now I'm not a big fan of these colors, but just to show you how it works. And then you can't really see the lettering. I'm not going to go back and redo all of the lettering right now, but here, this is the process I'm going to put. And then I'm going to have the booked call calendar. And so if we come back over here, what you're going to do is you're going to create a custom calendar. So check it out. Oh, wh what website did I go to? I, I, this is, it couldn't be simpler. And if you don't want to navigate, I'll make it even easier for you. There you go. And that's going to be how you build your custom calendar. And what do we use on those questions? The same questions I've been telling you guys to do since I created the step two training months ago. What's your constant information? Where are you? Where do you want to be? Do you understand this takes time and money? And you're not going to say, where are you? And where do you want to be? You're not going to be like, Hey, physically, where are you? No. Where are you doing with a key metric in your business? How many locations are you servicing a month? How many do you want to service? How many cars are you towing a month? How many do you want to service? How many fat people are you convincing to buy yogurt instead of ice cream a month? How many do you want to convince? That's it. Do you understand it takes time and or money? And so you create the custom calendar, then you embed the calendar, and then you're going to create tagged and automations. Check this out. I'm going to send you this link too. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to make this painfully easy for you guys. What is conditional logic informed? Does anybody know the answer before I, before I answer myself? Basically, what you're going to do is if they respond to a certain question, you can redirect them. So if they answer the form that's in the calendar or a form anywhere, and they don't answer questions that say, I'm a high quality client, it will redirect them to a downsell or it'll say, based off your answers, we're not working with you. Why would you want to get on a call with somebody who's not going to convert? I, I hate wasting time on sales calls. It pisses me off. It tells me that I didn't do my process right. It's not only is it a waste of my time, but it tells me, hey, your, your system isn't working well because you had this person come in that's not qualified. So use a conditional logic. If you say, hey, where are you and where do you want to be? And the first answer of where are you is like zero to 5,000 and you don't want to work with new people. If they put zero to 5,000, it can redirect them and say, hey, you're not qualified to work with us. And then you let them know in the content, hey, you're not qualified to work with us if you're not making this much. We're only for here to here. And so if they join and they answer honestly, great. And if they lie to get in there, then you're going to call them out, right? And they have more tutorials from the community, but you can come in here and just click this five minute video on how to do this. Great video. I love this video. So you're going to deny anybody that you don't want to work with. And when you're starting out, you don't have to do that at all, but I want you to have the link so you know how to do it. Now, what else can we do? We're going to do contact tagging. Contact tagging, just put the link in there too, because I'm keeping it super simple for you guys. Contact tagging lets us tag clients so we can essentially, from this, you can essentially dictate how a call went. So if somebody gets on a call, and let's say you don't close them. You can add a, uh, let's say, let's say it's a hard no. You can add a hard, you can say strong no or decline or lost lead. And that can put them into an automation that retargets them in six months. Let's say it's a soft no. You can put them in an automation that retargets them in one month or you can, that retargets them in their nerd, the newsletter sequence. Let's say it's a call booked. Once the call is booked, you can have an automation that automatically adds the tag call booked which puts them in a workflow with a nurture campaign. The tagging is going to make your life so easy. And look, you just scroll down. It walks you through how to do the whole thing. It even walks you through if you want to do it with third-party tools like Zapier. You can manually do it or you can have the automation do it. And you have, and look, every time you have a link, it has how to do certain things, which will fast track you to that. So I click it, it'll scroll me down. Or I have related articles. If you're like, well, how do I do standard triggers? It's right here. How to set up a um, workflows versus campaigns. How to send confirmations. It's all right here. And there's videos on all of this. It's, it's couldn't be easier. And, and I'll take it a step further. If you understand the process that you want to take your clients through, your leads through, the process that you want to handle your business, 
guess what? You don't have to do it. When I assign my uh, virtual assistants work, guess what I do in ClickUp? I just send them the link and I say, this is what I'm trying to do. Can you set this up for me? That's it. I had my team set up one of the hardest automations that you can create with high level just by sending them the link off of this. I can prove it to you right now. It's the uh, affiliate workflow. How to set up affiliate program web hooks to run automations. This is one of the hardest workflows I've ever seen because you have to coordinate with the high level team. I sent them this link. He set it up for me within two days. So if you're like, I know what I want to do. I don't know how to communicate how to do it. You go here, you copy the link, you send it over to them. That's it. And if we're going back to the funnel, obviously this is not the prettiest funnel because you saw how quickly I put it together. But the fact of the matter is what I just did, how many of you are dragging your feet on doing a very simple funnel like that? Check this out. I don't have a VSL. Get rid of it. Gone. I don't, I don't know what process I want to do. Gone. I don't have any case studies. Gone. So now we have blue, white. What's the next color? Main color, white. What's the next color if I follow that pattern? This should be black. And then I come in here and, you know, obviously I need to change the uh, font. And then I would, you know, make this blend in. I make these letters white. I get rid of this white background, right? But look, all... Everybody, everybody in this call, you should be able to say what I do. You can have this button where you click and it goes to this, the calendar. I just sent you the link on how to create the calendar automations in the calendar automations. You can change the color, change it to this annoying green if you want. And then your FAQ is just simple questions. As people ask you questions on sales calls, you fill this out. So if you're starting out and you don't know what questions they might ask, get rid of it. Boom, delete it. Or you can be like, hey, like, what's your pricing? Our pricing ranges from this to that. But we have to get on the call and assess your problems in order to accurately assess, you, uh, assess the pricing. Otherwise, we're overcharging you. And you don't want that, do you? That's, that's the easy FAQ. You guys own the software. Yes, we own the software. Can I have access to the software? Yeah. Are you done for you or done with you agency? We're both. We're one. We're the other, right? right. Or, hey, I don't have questions yet because I'm overthinking everything and I don't want to. Cool. Go on. And this is all you have now. And you don't even need the button because the calendar's there. Oh, my gosh. I'm joking. But I was, but Jacob, I was the same way as you, man. Oh, I know. I'm, I know. I'm, 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 I'm with you, dude. No, again. I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the, I'm the same. That, that's why I pick on you because I was in the same spot as you. Yeah. Look at this. That's all you need. This none is, of you, yeah, none of you have purchased a car by going to a register and buying the car. You bought the car because you saw content on the vehicle, you read reports on it, you test drove it, and then you said, cool, where do I check out? You didn't go to the register and pay for something that you didn't know if you wanted or not. You made sure you wanted it because the content, the appeal attracted you. So I just showed you how to build out just the wireframe and then you do the aesthetics and the automations. But if I just did that in eight minutes, I could do everything I just showed you, except Tesla. I could show you how to do everything here and from from what I just showed you and from the links I just sent you, you can build out a fully fun functioning funnel within 24 hours. Check this out. Redirect. Let's see. Instant redirect page funnel troubleshooting. How to do page and redirects. You, once they click submit, it pushes them to the next page. Once they book a call on the calendar, it pushes them to the thank you page. So now you just build a two page funnel. So what does that look like? You come here, you go back. Well, let's, uh, I'm just going to delete the whole thing. But and then you just create a new page and this is your thank you page and you have a two page funnel. That's it. Then you add it to your URL and you're done. And then you add in your automations for nurturing. You add in your automations for retargeting based off how the call went. If they're closed, you send them the automation stuff. Or you just say, hey, we're having another meeting for, for onboarding. And that's where you just pull it up. 
record the meeting, do everything you need to do, and then look at the recording and say, cool, here's how we fix X, Y, Z. Here's how I, here are how I streamline X, Y, Z. And then with the tagging, you can create a pipeline and the pipeline can move them so you can visually have an understanding of where people are. But the pipeline is basically lead, booked call, closed or lost, and then maybe retargeted. Like you don't have to get crazy with it. So use what I just sent you, but from this call, we're going to, we're going to wrap up because we went over as usual from this call, all you are doing is you're using the framework to create content in a way that is effective. You're pushing to a simple cash register and you are letting them check out. That's it. That's all you're doing. And if you're really overthinking it, which is perfectly fine, then here is the fastest solution. And I, I can even map out the entire workflow right here. Uh, we can actually do, actually, I don't even need to do that. That's your whole customer journey right there. That's it. I know people who are making over six figures a month. That's their entire funnel. They use a Google form and they put it on like a, they just have a Google form link. So you just go straight to the Google form link, which is free. You don't even need to pay for high level. Obviously you do if you're reselling it, but for people who are not even running a high level, they're just like a video creation agency. Just boom, right there, done. All your case studies and testimonials on, on YouTube. You can host everything on social media. You, websites are dying. If you're a marketing agencies, you don't, unless you're doing SEO specifically, and only SEO, you don't really need a website. It's kind of hard to market SEO if you're not using your own SEO. But even in that case, you really don't need it. This is all, so you guys have the resources. You understand how to make the content. You understand the psychology behind it. You understand that content comes before DMing. You have the links to the official high-level resources, which update in live time. I have mapped out for you exactly how to build the same wireframe that I showed you professionals are using. Obviously, take a little bit more time you know, I took eight minutes. If you took 30 minutes, I think we could make it a little prettier. Have your automations. If you're working 30 minutes a day, your funnel should be done within. And if you're brand new and you're following those workflows, your, your, or your, those guides, your funnel should be done within a week at the longest. If you have three hours to carve out, again, assuming you move slow, you saw how fast I was building it. Three hours, you should be done. If you're like me, you could build it out within 30 minutes. Nothing I did there was crazy. So, again, I know we went over. I want to make sure you guys got everything. We covered a ton. Like I said, this was going to be super, super in-depth. Next week, we're going to cover the DM process. We're going to cover the sales call methodology. And then from there, we're going to continuously go through this cycle. My goal is that you guys do well and you don't need me. That's my goal. The goal should be you guys are dominating this and you're saying we have so many clients that I need your help creating the operations to handle it all. That's my goal. Because then we can actually work together closer to peers and equals versus a mentor-mentee situation. Oh, I thought she was going to throw it out there. We're going to meet up on yachts together. We can, if we start making money like that, we'll come out to Miami. We'll, we'll do something crazy over here, uh, you know, yacht or, you know, whatever. Thanks, Alec. I'm heading down. I got to go eat dinner. No, you guys are good. Uh, we we went right. like way over, so. Call tomorrow. See you later. See ya. So that's it for today. What I'm going to do after this meeting is I'm going to pull up my ClickUp. I'm going to assign tasks to my virtual assistant. I'm going to send them the exact link that I, I showed you guys. I'm doing exactly what you guys are, what I'm telling you guys to do. I'm doing the exact same thing. The only difference is I'm actually doing it and I'm actually okay failing. I'm actually okay being rejected. I'm okay making a piece of content that you wouldn't wipe your butt with. I'm okay 
losing on a sales call, which doesn't happen often because I vet them so, so much. It's not, it's not because I'm the world's best closer. It's because I vet them so much because I hate wasting my time. So that's it for today. Any, I'll take one last question because I know we went like way, way over. Nope. Awesome. You guys have a great night. Appreciate you guys coming out. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'm going to repost it as a private link. Um, after a few weeks, I'll probably make it public after you guys have already milked it for everything it's worth. Uh, but for now, I'll just keep it as private. So you guys have a good one. And uh, any questions or anything, drop a question in the group and we'll go from there. Have a good one. See you guys. See you, man.